thing that we want to know is that ABC costing is different than the regular ones that we've been learning thus far. Um, <clears throat> and there's quite a few differences, and um, I've gone through the slides in pretty good detail. But um, one of the things I did want to point out is that manufacturing costs, as well as some other man non-manufacturing costs, are assigned to product costs, which is a complete deviation from what we did in previous chapters, where we only focused on the manufacturing costs. But here what we're trying to do is get an overview of all of the costs entailed in uh, making, producing, selling a product. So that's the idea there. So what we've learned in previous chapters is that there's one um, overhead activity, whether it's direct labor hours or machine hours, there's just one cost driver. Whereas in ABC costing, there's five, unit level, batch level, product, customer level and organizational level. So I've gone through these and actually in the notes part of the um, PowerPoint, I've described um, an example of each of these, but there's the unit level, the batch level, product level, don't you love my transitions, customer activity level, and the final one is organizational sustaining. Meaning, what does that mean? That means that anything that is a general organizational, anything that needs to be kept as a result of having an organization, those are organization sustaining. You can usually think of those things like the CEO and about the building and, you know, things that wouldn't change by producing or not producing a product. Okay, so there are different activity pools and not every single company has exactly the same uh, activity pools, but we're going to use one for a battery company, and they produce a different couple of different kind of batteries, and they have um, activity pools called customer orders. So how are their resources used in taking these orders? And so the way that they measure customer orders is how many orders did they take? Okay, another thing they do, because this is a battery company and they manufacture two different kinds of batteries, you can think of this like the auto parts store, they'll manufacture the standard one and then they'll manufacture one that's, you know, like their generic store specific one. So they have design changes because they have to put a different color battery on or a different label or something like that. So. Um, sometimes uh, a new company will come along and say, hey, I want a label um, that says Hanson's Batteries. And so they'll have to go through a design change and design a label just for that company. So the activity measures how many design changes have, have, have they made. Okay, and the order size, the number of units is produced. So this is based on machine hours. In other words, the machine hours are uh, determined by how many orders it produces, which kind of makes sense. And then we have customer relations, how many active customers we have because there's activities and costs that are associated with that. And then this organizational sustaining. We don't monkey with that in ABC costing. Okay, so <clears throat> one thing I want you to notice here is that there's direct material, direct labor, and shipping costs. And these are all very specific costs and don't need to be muddied up with this whole how much overhead do I have? Because it's always this gray area that we don't know about where we're trying to put everything into this overhead bucket. And um, so the direct material, direct labor, and shipping costs, they don't factor into this because it's very easy to trace which orders, which customers those went to. So you just automatically uh, apportion those things to those specific people. All right. So it's these overhead costs. So then the first stage of allocation is actually figuring out how much goes into each of these buckets. All right, so here we have been provided with all of the manufacturing and non-manufacturing overhead costs, all right? So you can see right away, we know about these. We've been talking about these through the other chapters. These are the production overheads, but now we've got these administrative overheads that we're gonna throw in here, a complete change from what we've been talking about before, okay? So we've got these overhead costs of $22 million. This is a magic number, so remember that, all right? We're gonna go through this example and I'm gonna show you 
what's going on. All right, so what happens, and this information will always be given to you, but we're going to do a first stage allocation. The way that we do that is we go around to everybody, all right, and we say, hey, dude, what do you do all day long? So in the production, sorry, that got cut off. In the production department, then we ask um, our indirect factory wages, how much time do you spend working on customer orders? And the indirect factory wages guy, think of like the supervisor. They spend 30% of their day working on customer orders, 30% managing design changes, 10% on the actual individual orders and uh, making sure that those go well, 10% dealing with customers and 10% taking coffee breaks. So that's 100% of their day. Now, factory equipment, we can't really ask it a question, but we assume that most of the depreciation on that equipment occurs because it's busy making orders. So that's the way we kind of look at that. Factory utilities, same thing. And the factory building lease is an other because it doesn't spend, it spends time doing everything. All right. The administrative department. Now here's where things start to get kind of interesting. The administrative wages and salaries, they spend more time processing orders, dealing with maybe individual order changes from customers, very little time, if at all, any time, dealing with the units themselves and producing those, and 30% on customer relations. Now, they spend a lot more time on coffee, all right? And then you can see it just goes down here like this. And then, oops, excuse me, I wanted to say one other thing, so hold on. The last thing I wanted to say, just to point this out, is that do you see my marketing and wages people? They don't deal at all with producing the orders, thank God, okay? They're dealing mostly with keeping customers happy, right? Same with all of my random selling expenses. This is all about retaining my customers and nothing about producing the orders or even doing the design changes. Okay, and this looks more confusing than it actually is, but if you could remember the indirect factory wages from the production department were $6 million. We were given that information. So then we take the first stage out, the, the first stage of that is like, what percentage of my day is spent working on the customer orders? And our supervisor said, I spent about 30% of my day working on customer orders and you go, great. Okay, so of that, Six million total dollars that we've spent on my indirect wages, 30% of that gets allocated to the customer order. And then we go down the list. So my factory equipment depreciation was 3.5 million. And then it said, well, how many, what percentage of the factory depreciation is associated with these customer orders? Okay. In other words, how much factory equipment time was spent supporting the function of doing customer orders. And it was determined and it was given to us that it was about 20%. You may be asking yourself, where are these percentages coming from? These are given to us, but there's also whole big consulting companies that that's all they do all day long is go around and figure out what people do all day long. Some of them call them time and motion studies, but for our intents and purposes, we're just gonna say, okay, I know that 20% of the time on the factory depreciation was spent using the customer orders. So hopefully this is going to start making sense to you. Okay, we're going to go on to the next slide. Okay, so after we are all said and done, we took all of those costs that we had and we basically did a first. So I went back a couple of slides and I just showed you that here was all of my costs in their raw form. And then what I did is I took, sorry about these transitions, some days I get kind of goopy. I just took these 30% and multiplied them out, and that's how we got our first stage allocation. And that's how we wound up with all of this. Now, the great thing is that, look at this, magically our $22 million is still here. It's just spread out differently. Now, what this shows me is how much has been spent on each of the activities of the company. So said another way, what is it that we did all day long and how much did that cost us? So that's really what this is starting to tell us. All right, we're going to move on to the second stage. And we're going to do that by using an example. So this team has determined that the Baxter Battery Company, the one we're using it as, a, as an example, has 10,000 orders, 
4,000 design changes, 8,000 machine hours, and 2,000 customers that it's, been, that it's served. So now we can take the first stage allocation and determine some activity rates. So if you remember from that first stage allocation, the customer orders, if you totaled that down, was $4.520 million. So you can see that's where this $4.52 million is. They told us on the previous slide that there was 10,000 orders. So that means that the activity rate is basically $452 per order. There were design changes, and of all the people that dealt with any kind of design changes, it wound up that those design changes cost us a little over $3 million. There were 4,000 of those changes, so each time there is a design change, it costs us $760. This is really powerful information. Here's my orders. That was the number of orders. That was how many machine hours, and so I have $6.50 per machine hour, customer relations, and so on and so forth. Okay, so these were the totals. I just left this here because these were the totals from those columns that we had. So that's our second stage allocation. Our first stage was basically taking the total amounts times their percentages for each of our five buckets. And then for each of those five buckets, how much does that mean per activity is it? And that's what we did right down here. And then we're going to take this information and go a step further. So if you look here, we're getting some more information. The Sure Start batteries require no new design. There was 8,000 batteries ordered on 4,000 separate orders. Each of them required 36 minutes of machine time, and that totaled 480,000. And I hope you could do the math on that. But in case you need some help, there were 800,000 batteries. Each of those batteries requires 36 minutes. You take 800,000 times 36. That gives you the number of minutes. You divide that by 60, and you come up with 480,000 machine hours for that one. Same down here, Long Life. They require a new design resource. Remember, those, des those design changes are costing us $720 each. There were 400,000 batteries ordered on lots of different separate orders, okay? That makes a difference too because every time there's a new order, we have new costs. There was 4,000 4, custom designs, right? Each of them requires 48 minutes of machine time for a total of 320,000 machine hours. Again, 400,000 batteries times 48 minutes gives us the number of minutes. Divide that by 60 for how many hours? And there you have it. Let's move on. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take that information that we found from the second stage of allocation. Remember that $452 per customer order, $760, and so on and so forth. Okay, and we multiply that out. One thing I want you to note here is that the activity rate stays the same, whether I'm uh, determining the overhead cost for the Sure Start or for the long life. So in this case, it's $452, $452. In the case of the Sure Start, there were 4,000 customer orders. So every all of the customer orders I ever took for Sure Start batteries was $1.8 million. Okay, there were no design changes for the Sure Start battery, so that was easy. Okay, 760 times zero is zero. And the order size, remember that was the machine hours, and that's how many machine hours it cost me. Same down here, but now for the long life, those activity rates stay the same, but in this case, there were 6,000 orders times $452 an order, blah, blah, blah. Design changes, there was lots of design changes. So you can see just at a glance here that the Sure Start batteries cost us pretty close to $5 million, right? The Long Lifes, we sold less of them, and they cost us $7.8 million, okay? So if you total this all together, you come down here, and all this is doing is truing it up. So you had those four, 4 4.5 $4 million in customer orders times the 10,000 orders, yada, yada. So I'm just taking this because this is where we determined our activity rate so that we could transfer them up here and figure out the different overhead costs for each of the batteries. 
So now we're going to look at a customer, and we're going to just, uh, one of these is called Acme Auto Parts. They placed 12 orders. Four of the orders were for those long lives, which required a design change, okay? So they had eight orders for 60 sure starts, four orders for 50 long lives, okay? So the eight orders of 60 required was, oops, excuse me, sorry, I didn't mean to advance that. Let's go back. Okay, so there was eight orders of 60 sure starts, so that's 480 sure starts, four orders of 50 long lives, that's 200 long lives, okay? So for machine hours, so we had to figure out how many orders there were. Then we have to figure out how many machine hours there were. So the 480 sure starts, see where we got that up here, required 288 machine hours, okay? So 480 times the 288 machine hours, which was from the previous slide. Each of them, so there's 36 minutes that it takes us for each of the sure starts that was provided on a previous slide. 36 minutes times the 480 sure starts equals that many minutes. Divide that by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour, comes up with 288 machine hours. Okay, so I calculated that out for you. 200 long lives required 160, so less machine hours, which is good, right? So you may think that's a better deal. They each require 48 minutes to manufacture those, so 48 minutes machine times times those 200 batteries equals 9,600 minutes, 60 minutes in an hour, 160 minutes, okay? Total of 448 machine hours, the 288 plus the 160. And now we're going to apply that second stage allocation that we had. Remember, these are our activity rates. The 452 times the 12 equals that. The design changes were, remember, they were $760 each. There were four design changes just for this one customer, 3000 and so on and so forth. So this, this customer, based on the orders that they placed, the cost, the menu, the, the, excuse me, the overhead costs for this customer were 12916 Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop with this section, and then I will record another video for the next section.